because I think today countries are dealing with a very big deal, the reauthorization of the ESEA. I think the direction is going completely wrong. She needs to take that message back to the President and the Secretary of Education. As its present form, the ESEA is going to kill all kind of anything that you are supporting. For languages, arts, music, drama, sports, because it's going to focus on things that we think that will make us globally competitive. And that's the thing. So you can see, I can have multiple titles for my talk. I can take one from the blog I wrote that today. I was just in San Diego talk, working with some of San Diego County's uh, superintendents and uh, University of San Diego. The, I wrote this thing, it's called Can You Become Globally Competitive by Closing Your Doors and Raising Test Scores? <laughs> okay, that's one title I can use. Another title I can use is What Knowledge is of Most Worth in the Age of Globalization? That's another thing I can use, right? So think about that, that title, the, this Can You Become Globally Competitive title. It's actually, that question was asked by a Dutch educator at an international conference in February in Michigan. When I was, I used to work in Michigan until last December, Michigan State. We had an international conference on education of eight different countries, people from England, Australia, uh, China, and the Netherlands, and others come over. So at that time, there was one speaker who was kept talking about how America lags behind in education compared to other countries, especially as measured by test scores in the PISA, in TIMSS, and all other forms of international assistance. You heard about this, this all the time. That we are number nine, we're number 19, where you know you heard President Obama saying we are declining, we used to be number one, used to be number by the way, I'm going to show you the data. We've never been number one, not number two, not even number three. <laughs> America has always been bad in test scores. Forget about that. So the, the idea was that, so this person was arguing as a businessman, he said that we have to improve our test scores in mathematics and reading. But that's really no channel behind has been about over the last decade or so. The AYP is about, uh, oh, right now the reauthorization under Obama and Duncan is basically a stronger version of that. It's going to get worse it's through the national Common core, common core standards, basically two subjects, math and reading, and as with also common assessment. Yes, it's so moving towards a, a very nationalized curriculum with the two subjects. You tag along two subjects with high stakes testing, what you will get is narrowing effects. Every school, every parent, because schools are going to be getting re be rewarded or punished. Teachers are going to be rewarded or punished based on student test scores on those subjects, and that's going to narrow the curriculum. So anyway, this Dutch uh, educator, it's a principal from uh, Amsterdam, he asked the person, I, I was on the panel debating the other person, but he was asking the person, can you become globally competitive by closing your doors and raising your test scores in math and reading? That's practically from anywhere you look at national policy in the U.S. That's the message. That's very much the message, right? Of course, that question needs to be rhetorical. You know, that's you, you know, of course, you can't. But if you look at U.S. policy, it's very much like that. So why does, do you think the U.S. people, I mean, like the Congress people, I'm sure Dr. Chu is not one of them, are they just stupid? <laughs> I mean, really, do you think, they, are they just stupid, you think? Well, I have to blame you because they came out of public schools. <laughs> some of the teachers didn't teach them right. Some of them thinking differently, right? That's, that's some of them. Or are they just ignoring the data? But I think if you take from a more generous perspective, I think they're just misguided. If you look at American public education, national, we'll be misguided by one thing something we call the achievement gap. Something we call the achievement gap. Because all of you, I'm not trying to convince you what to do. I'm convinced you to go out there to be more advocates for other kids. Your kids are already fortunate. If you just for your kids, I'm not even coming. I don't even care. Your kids are fine. Whatever you do, 
They'll be great. Seriously, you are here, your kids are great. It's, it's, it's now the kids. It's, 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 you know, I mean, they're going to do with this drama at this age, right? It's, uh, how many kids can do this? It is other kids. The last one, national policy is so interesting right now. It is completely, if you speak of global competitiveness, is actually depriving America of its capacity to be globally competitive. But it's in the name of trying to close that achievement gap. We have two types of achievement gaps. One is the domestic gap. One is the global gap. The domestic gap is that certain groups of students, our neighboring uh, Los Angeles Unified, for example, certain groups of children, certain communities, children from certain communities, do not seem to perform as well as students in other groups. That's what we call the domestic gap. That's one of the reasons we're trying to have common standards, have a common threshold, hold everybody accountable to that. The other one is for the global achievement gap. That is, American students do not receive as good education as children in other countries. So there's two gaps. That's why you know you hear President Obama, President Bush, everyone talks about why we need to fix American education because other kids are going to outcompete us. We have to outcompete the Chinese here, you know, and the Indians somewhere else, right? It's a, we have to beat them because they are eating our lunch. That's Thomas Friedman is talking about. Or they're trying to eat our lunch. That's the argument, right? You hear about those things. I remember Thomas Friedman said that, you know, the author of the word is flat. He said, um, when I was growing up, my mother told me, finish your dinner. Because kids in China, India are starving. He said, now, I, you know, now I tell my daughters, finish your homework. The Chinese and Indians are starving for your jobs. That's, 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 that's the argument. That's, that's, so the idea is that our students are not doing well. You hear all this justification every day talking about how we, our education has been declining, we're not doing so much trying to close this achievement gap. But I can tell you this, globally, as I told you, America has never been good education compared to other countries. You hear about Sputnik all the time. 1957, Sputnik was launched. That put America as a nation in panic. To think that we are behind the Soviet Union, scientifically and technologically. And in the US, we have this very good habit. That is, when we have a social crisis, we blame schools. <laughs> or we try to find the root cause. It has to be our education. Something's wrong with our education. Remember that? That's, so when JFK talked about this missile gap, thinking that the Soviet Union had more missiles than the United States, that's actually, by the way, was misinformation. But it was won him the election. I actually was pondering if he did not call the term, would he, he would not become president if I still be alive today. It's, History has very interesting things to play. Just fascinating to think about this one. But anyway, that way got him to one over Nixon. So because Nixon was talking about we are going to make color TVs. You know, but they said, you know, uh, Kennedy said, we got to make more missiles. So this is called a missile gap. The missile gap, gap was interpreted as an education gap. Saying that our schools must be doing something wrong compared to that of Soviet Union. You know, actually, we, we always look for find causes of social problems in schools. Look right now, today, I haven't even heard of this. Your parents, your teachers, you know this. After the recent economical crisis, and uh, we should blame the Wall Street executives, but actually we don't. We blame schools. Why? Because schools, you did not teach your children financial literacy. That's actually what we're talking about. We should teach our student financial literacy. You did not teach your kids not to borrow money you may not even have. That's what Congress is doing. You know, as it's, uh, so you don't learn from the president. You don't borrow money you don't have. Okay? But you know, at that time, the Sputnik made people look for answers. So when they went to compare schools, students in the Soviet Union were studying what they call a much more rigorous curriculum. Narrow but rigorous. Science, that's chemistry, physics, biology, mathematics.